Hey guys, this is DJW0071 and I wanted to make a video just um, kind of going over my history a little bit as a Christian and why, why it is that I um, believe the way that I do. I was born and raised in California and uh, my father was an Assemblies of God minister. Oftentimes would start a church and stay there for three or four years or we would take over a church and build it up for three or four years um, and then leave to go to do that again to another church. My parents were definitely the best parents um, I could have ever wanted um, or asked for. They, um, they loved me um, so, so much and um, I just appreciate every single thing that they've given me and that they've done for me. When I was about 13, um, I started to kind of despise um, the fact that I was a pastor's son and that people kind of looked at me as if I ought to act one way or another. And I kind of felt like, uh, why is it that people look at me this way? You know, why, why do I have to bear this burden more than, you know, other teenagers in the church? Um, you know, why is it that I have to be extra good and, and act extra godly and um, when I didn't even really understand the truths of God and Christ um, in a personal way. I mean, I, I definitely learned all about them and I could probably quote a lot of scripture and I, I remember all of the Bible stories and I believed in God, but I didn't have a personal relationship with God. My relationship with God was more like I knew that he existed, um, but he was kind of a far away um, figure almost like a deistic kind of approach to God where that God is, is up there somewhere but he doesn't interact with my life. So I started to smoke cigarettes and I started to smoke pot and drink alcohol and um, let my language slip and basically to stop thinking about God and to stop talking about God and to start um, despising my parents. Um, also, I didn't want anyone controlling my life. Like, I wanted to be my own person. I didn't want to be uh, the kid who is good um, only because he's supposed to be good, because that's who his father is. I didn't want my identity to come from that. I wanted to be able to take my identity into my own hands and say, you know, I can do whatever I want to do and be whoever I want to be. I don't have to be this way just because I live in this situation. And when I got to be a sophomore in high school, um, we had moved to a new town and I had to make new friends and it was really hard at that point I was just so angry with my parents for moving me away from my first high school and I had some friends there I had a base built up but then we moved away and we had to start over all, all over again and it was just really hard for me so I basically fell into this kind of um, just very angry very quiet silent um, not wanting to talk to mom and dad not wanting to uh, open up at all at home um, and at school I wanted friends but I was so unsure of myself and so um, just not confident that um, people started picking on me. A group of kids would follow me home and throw rocks at me and taunt me and um, basically threaten me that they were gonna jump me and beat me up and I got into lots of fights um, just because I got tired of being taunted and tired of being picked on and uh, so I would basically just fight, get into fights and um, during that period in my life I did make a few friends. Uh, we were all kind of outcasts and um, or at least we thought we were outcasts and um, we got into some pretty serious trouble. Um, I know that we had um, broken into a gas station in the middle of the night and stole um, a lot of alcohol and a lot of money and just trashed the place and just made a mess of the place. Um, so that was, you know, we burglarized that gas station. And then a month or two later, we broke into the school and stole five of the, la um, the computers from the school library. Um, so uh, we, we did get caught for those things and I ended up getting expelled from that high school. And uh, I went before the school board and they uh, kicked me out of school. Uh, it didn't matter that I was a pastor's kid, it didn't matter that I was able to come up with all these good references from the congregation, um, but um, they, they kicked me right out of school and I spent a month and a half in juvenile hall. And, um, you know, I embarrassed my parents um, 
their, their church, um, it, it didn't look good for their church, and I embarrassed them. And they never brought that up to me, they never threw that in my face. They were always just there for me, and always prayed for me, and always were just hoping and waiting uh, for God to touch me and turn my life around. After um, I got expelled from that school, I went to another high school. I was playing football there, I was playing basketball there, and I did well there as a senior in high school. But I was still living for myself. Uh, I certainly was pursuing pleasure more than um, anything else. Uh, I really lived for just getting drunk, getting high, uh, pursuing girls, and um, that kind of thing. So um, I went to college after high school to play basketball um, down in Los Angeles, and I did play down there. And um, I started to get into harder drugs at that point in my life. I was doing. LSD and ecstasy and cocaine and different things that I could get my hands on. And that was just normal for me. I just totally forgotten about God and forgotten about my, my home life and how I was raised. Um, but, it, you know, if someone were to really pin me against the wall and say, you're a Christian, aren't you? you you're, aren't you a Christian? I would say, yeah, you know, I'm a Christian. Uh, I'm a, I believe in Christ. You know, I believe in Jesus. I'm, I'm born again. Um, that's if someone were to really press me, I would admit that I was a born again Christian. I decided to take a break from school when I was in my uh, when I was 22 or 23. I moved out to the East Coast um, to Massachusetts to live with my brother because he was able to give me a job after school. So at that time, I was about 24. Um, I met my wife um, at a at a friend's wedding and uh, we started dating. We got engaged in February of 2004, and we. Um, decided that we would try to quit smoking because she was a smoker too. We wanted to be healthy, um, you know, if we were going to start a, a new family, we wanted to be healthy. And cigarettes were expensive, so we wanted to save money. And so I started the process of um, trying to quit smoking. And I thought that, you know, I, I have all these other addictions, you know, and all these other kind of things that are wrong with my life. Um, but let's start with cigarettes because I knew that was going to be the hardest one for me. I was really, really, truly addicted to cigarettes because I loved them so much. I just, I, you know, I planned my whole day around smoking. Um, but anyway, I started trying to quit, and I tried everything from uh, the Nick gum to the patch to cold turkey, you know, mind over matter, all this other stuff. Um, but I just, you know, would fail time and time again. I would go a week or a month or a few days or a few months. And just every single time, you know, I'd see somebody smoking a cigarette and it would just make me want one so bad. Or I'd get into an argument with someone and my stress level would go up and that would make me want to smoke a cigarette. So I would just cave because I was someone who craved pleasure. I only wanted pleasure. So I thought, you know, that I'm, I'm feeling all this anxiety and stress, you know, a cigarette would make, would give me pleasure. You know, why don't I just go buy a pack of, of cigarettes and, and smoke? and smoke them and that would help me to feel better and it did you know it helped me to feel better my body truly loved cigarettes um, and so I, I smoked them all the time and I was like hungry for them if I couldn't afford them I would bum them from people um, I remember being desperate enough to pick up a half smoked cigarette and light it up and smoke it I mean I had no no clue who smoked that cigarette before but I did, I did that many times. Um, I remember, you know, not really thinking about that and just doing it because the nicotine was more important than the germs. <laughs> when we got married in 2005, I was ready to stop to try to quit smoking again because we had our new family. I wanted to really start things out right. So um, I decided to try to quit smoking again. So uh, I took a nicotine patch. Um, and put it in my back pocket and I went to work. Um, I was working at a plastics factory overnight, 12 hour shift. Before I went to work, I said a prayer, a sincere prayer, for the first time in a long time, probably for the first time in many years, um, I said, Jesus, if you could take this cigarette smoking away from me, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, and then I went to work. It was a five second prayer. It was really you know, I didn't expect anything from it. Um, again, you know, I had this mindset of this theistic God who's up there somewhere, but he doesn't, you know, he's not, he doesn't interact in my life, you know, personally. So I said this five second prayer, not expecting anything from it. I put a nicotine patch in the back pocket 
and I went to work. And I worked 12 hours overnight, um, pretty hard labor at the plastics factory. I came home smelling like plastic, ready for bed and tired um, that morning. And I took off my pants, about ready to get into bed, and I noticed in the back pocket that the nick patch was still there. And that I didn't think about using it, and I didn't think about cigarettes while I was at work that night. I thought, that's odd. And then I just got in bed and went to sleep. And I woke up that evening, maybe in the afternoon, um, the sun was shining, birds were chirping, neighbors were raking their lawn and making it really impossible for me to sleep during the day. I don't know if any of you guys ever worked graveyard shift, but it is really hard to sleep during the day when everyone else is bustling about. I noticed something right away. I just didn't want to smoke them anymore. The urge was gone. It wasn't there. Uh, it didn't exist. I was no longer addicted to cigarettes. Um, it was pl painfully clear to me that God had reached into my life and changed something. He wasn't just a God who was up there looking down from afar, you know, with his arms crossed, waiting for me to make a mistake or, you know, waiting to zap me or something. He was a God who was waiting for me to reach out to him in faith, you know. He was just waiting to wrap his arms around me and say, you know what, I love you, I love you, I care for you, and I've been waiting so long for you to acknowledge me, you know, and to, you know, ask me for something. I just, you know, at that point, I just broke down. I, like, I, I, I knew God was real, and I just broke down. It was like an epiphany moment. It was a life-changing moment. I just, I, from that moment on, I literally changed everything about myself. I stopped swearing. I stopped smoking, obviously. I stopped smoking pot. I stopped lying. I stopped everything. All things that I knew were ungodly, I knew all these things were ungodly. I stopped them that day. I started looking for a church to go to because I knew that the God of the universe who created all things had reached into my life. He answered my request. Who am I? I'm just, you know, I'm just an ant on this world. Not only an ant, but a prodigal, you know, a prodigal son who was, who had everything, was raised with loving parents and all these things, you know, and I, and what did I do? Like I told, I rebelled against my parents. I embarrassed them in front of their church. God was real. The God of the Bible could reach into my life and touch my heart and and change something about me i mean who am i who am i to receive anything from god it changed my outlook on life it changed everything about life if god cared enough about me to come die on a cross on my behalf um, then i must be pretty special to him and i must have significance in his eyes and that just blows me away Anyway, that's my story, and I appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to my video. And I hope that you would subscribe and uh, continue to share me. I do appreciate all the um, prayers and the support that you've given me for this channel. And I hope that you guys would be blessed. Have a good one.